How's it going? My name is Travis, and I'm going to be telling you how to do shear and moment diagrams. Uh, it's going to help us on the T. So, first thing we did was we went to the study guide and we found this on shear and moment diagrams. So, first thing you're going to do is solve for the sport reactions. Next thing you're going to do is work from left to right. You're going to start with that shear diagram and then work on the moment diagram. Um, so, a couple quick notes. Uh, you always want to be able to start and finish at zero. If that doesn't happen, you're probably not doing it right. And also make sure you label all those critical values um, that you need. So we already solved these support reactions for you just for the sake of time. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead. So here we have, uh, we chose two ramp loads just because we figured the class would have um, the most issues with these ramp loads because they're the hardest to grasp. So we've got one ramp load that's increasing in the beginning. We got another one that does the opposite, so we can show both sides. So to begin, we label our support reactions here, both four kilonewtons, um, and then we have our ramp load. We got our distances: two meters, three meters, then two meters again. So let's begin. Uh, first one you're gonna do is your shear diagram. We got kilonewtons. We got kilonewtons per uh, times meters. So our support reaction is four kilonewtons. So you're going to start right at four kilonewtons because it's working upwards, and then you're going to come down. It's going to be concave down for this first ramp load because what it's doing is it's slowly working against this support reaction right here, and then after that it's increasing, 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 working against it more and more and more. That's why you're going to get concave down. See how it does that? It slowly increases back down to zero. How you get to zero is you take the four kilonewtons per meter, working over two meters, which would be eight kilonewtons, and then you're gonna take half of that because it's a triangle instead of the rectangular load. So that's how you get four kilonewtons to get back down to zero. From here, um, there's no forces in the y direction between these two ramp loads, so the shear is not gonna be affected at all. And then you're gonna begin to the second ramp load. This one is starting with a uh, larger force and ending down at zero as you get towards the support reaction. So it's working against it the most right here. That's why it's gonna be concave up. So you see how it's working against that support reaction uh, the most right here. That's why you're gonna get this huge increase and then it's gonna start tapering off as you get towards the end, which uh, ends up at four for that support reaction and back down to zero, which is where you need to be. So we're gonna move on to how we got this area right here, which you're gonna need for the moment diagram later. So what we did was we found out that the load, um, the slope of the load is gonna be negative two X uh, because you're gonna get four kilonewtons per meter over two meters, rise over run. So you're gonna get negative two X. Then what you're gonna do is integrate this to get negative X squared plus four for the shear. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and do that moment as well. So you're gonna get negative one third X cubed plus four X. So once you have this, you can find out everything you need at that two meter point. So what you're gonna do is you plug in that two right there and you get the shear is zero at that point. Um, we got this four uh, from this intercept right here. See how you get the equation negative x squared plus four? That's right there. And then you're gonna plug in two to here to find out what that moment is at two. And you're gonna get 5.33. Now we move on to the moment diagram. We already saw for this first part right here, there's no moment, no, no moments affecting uh, from this ramp load to the next, and they're symmetrical, so this one is also gonna be 5.33 to bring it back down to zero. Uh, one last thing that I didn't touch on is the reason why this is concave down when this is also concave down. So if you're to look at it right here, you're gonna have this large part and it's gonna be working to less and less and less and less as you go across this shear right here. And that's how you really, the easiest way to tell whether it's gonna be concave down or concave up. This large piece working towards the small, which is how you're gonna get that tapering off at the end. And the same on the other side. Uh, this concludes everything. Uh, come hit us up if you have any questions.